Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good to us tonight, and we're thankful uh, for each one, praise the Lord, that are with us in the house of the Lord tonight. I will be reading in the book of St. Luke, if you'd like to read with me tonight, some familiar reading, but I felt uh, maybe this message would be great uh, for us to hear tonight, and I think, I think that this is something I've never preached from this thought but uh, it's the scriptures have been read from so many times, and we preach from these scriptures. 13th chapter of St. Luke, if you'd like to read with me, we want to read a few verses here. Praise the Lord. St. Luke chapter 13. Thank God. Thank God. St. Luke 13, verse 6. And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. And he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. Amen. Tonight I want us to look in the seventh verse together, and I want to preach from that last phrase, why cumbereth the ground. Amen. And I ask the Lord's blessings on the me message tonight. Would you let us pray together? Father, we love you and honor you once again. Lord, that you're with us tonight in this service, the presence of God, how we have felt you, Lord, tonight. We need your help, Father. We need your God to move for us, Lord, in this service. We give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is dealt with the religious crowd of the Jews. And uh, we know that he was long suffering with them. And we find even this parable. And uh, I feel tonight that it is representing the Jewish people, and uh, he is speaking here concerning a certain man that had planted a vineyard. He sought fruit on it and found none. And for three years, he said, I came seeking on this tree fruit and found none. And he says, why cumbereth it the ground? And I want to just talk to us just for a few moments here tonight. Amen. Why cumbereth it the ground? And uh, if you look right there in the, uh, in the eighth verse, he said, answered and said, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. If it bear fruit well, if not, then after thou shalt cut it down. And I, I got to thinking today, why cumbereth the ground? Uh, is anybody here that presently, do you have a garden? Anybody here that has a garden or has had a garden? Amen. Uh, why do you go out at least once a year to that place where you have a garden and you plow the ground? You, you cultivate and turn over that ground. Why do you do that? Amen. I tell you, I know why you do it. It's because you know that if you're going to get anything to produce out of that garden, that garden has got to be cultivated. It's got to be broke up. It's got to be plowed. If those uh, plants are going to dig, uh, take root and go down into that ground, that ground has got to be prepared. Amen. Thank God. It looked like after three years, uh, this dresser, the Bible said, of this owner of the vineyard, praise God, that this, this man that had the fig tree that planted the vineyard, it looked like he had gotten sort of weary 
going and looking and seeing that there was no figs, there was no fruit on this tree. And uh, he, he come once again and he looked and saw there's no fruit on the tree. Why, he asked the dresser of the vineyard, why cumbereth the ground? Why continue to work around this tree? This tree is taking up space in this garden. This tree is, you're continuing to take time and work and cumber the ground for this tree. He said, just hew up the tree, get rid of the tree, cut it down and do away with it. Praise God. But uh, I thought here today, amen, we find the answer. And I want us to understand this is a parable that Jesus has given to us. And it says here that the dresser of the vineyard, and how many knows tonight, amen, that Jesus, our Savior, thank God, he is that keeper of the vineyard. Praise God. He is the dresser of the vineyard. Three years, amen, he said, uh, he answered and said, Lord, let it alone this year till I shall dig about it and dung it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there, looking at it, amen, the one said, I don't see no reason why we should cumber the ground. But this dresser said, Lord, give me one more year. Let me continue to work with it and dress with and, and dig about it and work with it. I wonder why, amen, he continued to want to be uh, interested and in labor and work for this amen Pacific tree. I believe in my heart and mind that this dresser of the vineyard had labored three years, had dug about it, had had cultivated it, had worked with it, tried to get it to produce. And I believe the dresser of the vineyard saw, I believe, hear me, I believe he saw potential, even though there was no fruit on that tree. I believe he saw the potential that there could be if maybe just one more year, amen, you let me continue to work with it, maybe it will produce the fruit that's, that we're expecting on this tree. And I got to thinking today, amen, why cumbereth the ground? Why, amen, do we continue to plow? Why do we continue to turn over the ground? Why do we continue to cultivate the ground? Sometimes it looks like for the Paul, amen, year after year goes by and we don't see the results that we want to see. And it would be nothing more but what the devil desired for us to get disheartened, amen, for us to get uh, kind of discouraged. Thank God. And the, the man said, just why cumber the ground? What's the use? Just cut it down. Thank God, that's what the devil would love to see done. But oh, that dresser said, let me work with it one more year. Thank God. Why cumber up the ground? Thank God. I believe tonight if God will help me. Thank God, brother. I want to continue. Thank God to, to plow. Amen. And preach and cultivate and work and labor. Thank God. Sometimes it seems like the enemy would love for us to get discouraged. Hallelujah. Some people, I think, they, they look and they say, Brother Andrew, leave me alone. I don't want you to bother me. Brother Andrew, don't preach that no more to me. Why in the world do you continue to keep plowing up this ground? Hallelujah. It's my job. Amen. To continue to cumber the ground. Hallelujah, because one day I'm looking for fruit. One day I'm looking for results. I cannot let the devil cause me, amen, to take the plow and put it up in the shed and quit plowing. Amen. Thank God. I want to tell you tonight, if we don't keep this thing covered and keep it plowed up, thank God, brother, it will not produce nothing for God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. It's not always comfortable. It's not always pleasant to have, amen, your ground turned over. It's not all, don't always feel good for that old sharp plow, amen, to come down where you're living at and turn over that ground, amen. But I read a scripture today, and many of you probably could quote it. Hallelujah. Amen. But the book of Hosea chapter 10, verse number 12 said, Break up your fowler ground. Praise God. Break up your fowler ground. That old ground, hallelujah, that get 
gets hard and crusty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Won't nothing grow in it. Won't nothing produce in it. It's done got hard and crusty. It needs to be turned over. It needs to be cultivated and worked. I'm glad today for the gospel plow. I'm glad today for the word of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sisters and brothers, hey, man, it don't feel good even to me. But I want God to keep my ground, hey, man, cultivated and turned over. Because I realize today, hey, man, that's the only way that I'm going to bring forth the fruit that's needed for the Lord. Hallelujah. Why cumbereth the ground? Glory to God. Hallelujah. God help us. Amen. I want to just preach to you just a moment here tonight. Amen. Sometimes our patience gets a little thin with people. I have to admit, Brother Smith, sometimes I get a little bit impatient waiting to see, amen, God do the work in their lives. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, you know, we, we look and uh, we expect folks just to come and measure up just like we do. Sometimes we expect it to happen sort of overnight. Come on. Yeah. Amen. But sometimes we have to wait for the precious fruit of the vine. We have to wait for that ground to be uh, cumbered, praise God, and worked around. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. And, and when, we, when we labor and we work and we wait Praise God, we will eventually, I believe, we will see the results of what God is doing in their lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. For many, many years, thank God, I have, I have preached to people, Brother Rob, and I have not seen any movement. I haven't seen any amen, advancement. And, and sometimes, sister, I get a little bit disheartened. Hallelujah. And that old enemy says, well, just don't, don't cumber the ground. And just recently, I've been I've been battling some some thoughts and some feelings that I've had in my mind, and uh, you know it seemed like it's been in my mind. Just leave them alone. Hey, been they don't want to to have nobody to plow around them. They don't want nobody to say nothing to them. Just leave them alone. That's been in my mind and in my heart. Praise God. Just let let them be. Praise God. Hey, been but you know that 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 prophet Jeremiah. He was preaching to this these Israelites. He was preaching to the Jews. And they refused to hear the message. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. Yeah. Praise God. Praise they, they, they were turning a deaf ear to what he was saying. Didn't look like it was going nowhere. And Jeremiah got disheartened. And he said, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to not say nothing. Praise God. I'm tired of this. I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to leave them alone. Not going to say anything to them. But the Bible said the more he sat there. The more the fire was burning. And he said it was like a fire. He said the word of God was like a fire shut up in his bones. Hallelujah. He said, and I could not forbear. You know what he had to do? Had to get right back on the front line and go to plowing again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God, sister, you know, amen, when you realize folks don't want you to plow around them, when you realize folks don't want to be cultivated because it don't feel good, thank God sometimes, amen, you know, just leave them alone. Let them be. But you know when God's called us, amen, to put the plow in the ground, hallelujah, and turn over that old fowler ground, thank God that ground that the devil wants to get hard, that ground the devil wants you to get comfortable in the condition that you're in, knowing that you're not where you need to be with God. Amen, but if you can just go through the motions of coming to church, amen, brother, and be comfortable in that place where you are, leave me alone, amen, don't get around me, don't dig around me, thank God, don't plow around me, that's where the vast majority of our church world is today, they're comfortable in the complacent place, in their experience with God, they don't want nobody, amen, brother, to make them feel uncomfortable, but when this word of God is preached, the Bible said it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank God when the word of God's preached, brother, it ain't made to make you feel comfortable. But thank God it'll turn over that old foul ground. Thank God that it'll produce uh, that that's needed in your life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Oh, 
Amen. Why cumbereth the ground? Thank God. I realize in old today that it meant there's some folks that's got the idea. Hallelujah. That man's plumb crazy. Thank God. He thinks I'm going to change. I ain't changing. Amen. That man's done, praise God, lost his mind. Praise God. Oh, they think that what I do and how I preach, thank God. Oh, they think it's unnecessary. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you tonight, glory to God, why cumbereth the ground? Amen. There's a need for preaching. There's a need for the plow. Hallelujah. I was, I was reading. I was reading today. Amen. In the word of God. And I was reading and as I was studying. Amen. There was a writer that had wrote a commentary concerning amen, the parable of the seeds and how some fell on stony ground. Thank God that ground that was hard and didn't find no, it didn't find no depth for, amen, for that, that seed to find any root because of it was stony ground. Amen. And the writer said in his, in his commentary, he said, he said, we either going to have to be plowed or we're going to die. Amen. I read that again. He said, we're going to have to be plowed or we're going to die. Amen. Thank God. I believe that to today. Amen. If we don't let that ground get cultivated and plowed around us, glory to God, don't matter how long we've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, we'll never get to the place where the Word of God don't need to come to where we are. Hallelujah. Break up that old fowler ground of our lives. Hallelujah. Thank God that where when the Word of God is preached, you know what we're doing? Amen. We're sowing seed. This word of God is seed. Amen. Thank God. And the devil don't want that seed. Hallelujah. To take root. Amen. And bring forth fruit for God. Oh. Amen. And I'm telling you today. Amen. There's a lot of seed being sown. But it's being sown on hard ground. It's being sown on, on, sown on foul ground. And I'm a finding uh, that when the, amen, when the rain comes, uh, it just washes away. Amen. When the sun bears hot, come on. Uh, that seed, it had got down in the ground and it wilts and it goes away. Amen. Folks seem like they do good for a little while and you wonder why. What happened? They withered away. They fell away. Telling you what happened. That ground wasn't broke up. That heart wasn't plowed. That ground wasn't broke up. Thank God that the word of God didn't get root where it needed to be of their heart. Amen. God help us today. We need our ground to be covered up. Thank God. Amen. Where the word of God can be effective in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I just felt like while I was studying this, I felt like, thank God, some folks has got it in their mind. Why does a preacher have to preach like he does? Why does the preachers have to plow like they do? I'm going to tell you there's a devil out there. Oh, my Lord. I've never seen such a hard-hearted generation that we're living in today. Even in the church world, God help us. Hallelujah. I'm so glad tonight that the Spirit of the Lord touched us. I've seen people crying with tears coming out of their eyes. I've seen people, they've been rejoicing. The Spirit of God's touched them. Oh, God, don't let us get so hard that we're never even moved by the Spirit of Almighty God. When the Spirit of God comes among us, we don't even recognize it because our heart has got so hard. And, oh, God, keep me tender. Thank God, keep me cultivated. Thank God to where the Spirit of God, amen, when he passes by, it will affect my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I can see that dresser of that vineyard right now. Oh, glory. Amen. Give me one more year. Give me one more year. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. I've got to preach to you just a minute. I believe that dresser knew from that moment, 12 months later, that man that had that vineyard was going to come walking back through there again. And I believe, Sister Connie, with all my heart, the dresser of that vineyard made a special, special effort. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe he dug around it more than he ever did. I believe he dung around it and fertilized it more than he ever did. Amen. 
Oh, hallelujah. Brother, I wanted to know something. Amen. I wonder if we've even got 12 months left before the Lord comes. I don't know how much longer we got. Amen. Sister, is it time for me to take the attitude? Well, why cover the ground? Is it time for me to take the attitude? Leave them alone. I'm telling you, amen, we're just about to come through the end of this thing, sister. And if there's ever a time I need the fire of God and the word of God to be burning upon my heart, thank God. If there's ever a time, hear me, preachers, hear me. If there's ever a time we're going to take the gospel plow, thank God, sink it down deep, amen, and turn over the foul ground. Oh, sister, the master's coming. Thank God. I don't know how much longer it's going to be. Amen. But we're living in a hard-hearted generation. Thank God there's some folks hear me. There's some folks, my friend, I'm afraid for it's all said and done. They're going to be fell out with the preacher because the preacher won't leave them alone. Amen. They ain't going to want to get around the preacher because the preacher keeps telling them they need to get close to God. Amen. Some of them's going to run away. Amen because they're not going to hear it but God help me not to get in a corner somewhere and take the attitude why cover up the ground I tell you don't have long amen brother to work for souls uh, this thing's a running out uh, hallelujah God help us to go to work more than we've ever worked before amen oh hallelujah 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 oh glory I got to reading, amen, some today. Thank the Lord, amen. Oh, and I got to reading this scripture, and it come to me when I studied this. Jesus said unto him, no man. And, and, and the thought's been on my mind today. Why cumber the ground? Why keep on plowing? Why keep on sinking the plow down there? Some of them act like they don't want, they don't want you to say nothing to them. Just leave me alone. I'm comfortable like I am. Sister, amen, why do we keep on plowing? Why do we keep on preaching like we do? Because the Bible said, no man, Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and look back, hallelujah, is fit for the kingdom of God. Glory to God. I'm telling you tonight, sister, I cannot quit plowing. I cannot quit preaching. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I'll tell you the warning lights on tonight. Time is a wrapping up. Hallelujah. We ain't got long to get where we're going to get with God. Hallelujah. I remember Brother Hester many years ago. Hallelujah. I, I mean, this has been years ago. We used to sing that song, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Brother Hester said, you better quit getting ready and get ready. Praise God. You better be ready. Thank God for, amen. He said, be ye also ready. Amen. Lord, I'm a getting ready. That's what a lot of folks are saying tonight. Give me one more day, God. Give me another year, Lord. Amen. God, give us year after year after year. The plows are coming around. Amen, brother. God is a giving us what we need. Uh, hallelujah. It's time to be ready. Thank God it's time to let God uh, help you to bear fruit uh, of righteousness for him. Amen. I don't believe we got much longer, sister. Hallelujah. God, play around me more than you ever have. Amen. Dig around me, oh God. Don't let me get adjusted to this world. Don't let me get accustomed to the things of this world. I'm not of this world. I'm only passing through. God, help me, Lord. Amen, brother, to keep the ground turned over. Hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God. Why cumber? Why cumber? That's the attitude that this man had. Thank God. Why cumber? I want to tell somebody here tonight. Hear me. I want to tell somebody here tonight. I haven't gave up on you. Glory to God. Sometimes I don't see the results that I want to see. Thank God. But if God hadn't give up on me, and that dresser said, Lord, I know you want to cut it down, but let me do go around it. Let me work with it one more year. God's a long-suffering God. Hallelujah. Amen. If God ain't gave up on you, I better not give up on you. Hallelujah. I want to go to work more than I ever have before to help people get ready 
for the coming of the Lord. Thank God, sister, when I stand before Almighty God, I know everybody I preach to is not going to heaven. I know that. But I don't want to stand there before God Almighty. And God said they were there, but you didn't tell them. They were there, but you didn't warn them. Praise God. I want to do it right. Thank God get folks ready to meet God Almighty. Hallelujah. Keep that ground turned over as we're standing all over the building tonight. I preach to you my heart. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Why cumbereth the ground? Hear me. Amen. You may not be a preacher tonight. Some of you got lost loved ones. Friends and neighbors and people you've prayed for for years and years and years. Sister Deanna, you're a prime example, sis. Glory to God. I pray to God that Roger gets right. But I'm telling you from all signs that I'm seeing, I'm going to tell you what, if he don't get right quick, he's on his way, he's sick, he don't look like he's going to be here that much longer. He's had a praying wife. Amen. Listen. I'd hate to know I had to die and go to hell living in the churchyard. But I'm going to tell you, he's had the opportunity. Amen. But until God gives that last breath, we've got to keep the fields turned over. We've got to keep, amen, believing God to the last moment of time. Hallelujah. Thank God. Just give me 12 more months, Lord. Amen. Don't hew it down. Let me cumber it around. Let me dig around it. Amen. There's a reason why we must stay working for God. Most important thing that I know of, hear me tonight, most important business is the business that we're dealing with tonight. When it comes to souls of men, that's the greatest business that there is in the world. Glory to God. You know what? We don't have but one chance. Hallelujah. I'd have never thought the other night at 11, 11, 30, 11 o'clock it's laying in my bed that I'd have got that phone call. I mean, it just wasn't on my mind. I had this furthest thing from my mind that I'd get that phone call of one of our brothers here at the church went out to meet God just like that. Sister, I'll never be able to preach to him another message. I'll never be able to give him another on. He's done gone to meet God. And I believe Brother Britt made it. But I want to tell you tonight, Hey, Ben, I've got to do my best while I can. Hey, Ben, I don't want to get the attitude like this man had. Cut it down. Why cumber the ground? God's a merciful God, long-suffering, and he wants people to make it. Amen. Thank God I'd give you my heart tonight. Maybe we'll find us a place here in the altar. Talk to God. Hallelujah. God, give us the spirit, Lord, to where we'll continue. To keep working the fields. Amen. Not get weary, but stay in there, Lord. Plowing, working, praying, seeking God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.